Dan. Yeah, Dan. Dan, you're 25. Yeah. Because uh, mine's on anyway. Dan, what's going on? Uh, no, hold on. I just had a couple of uh, questions. Uh, I just needed... Uh... Oh, there, there we go. Oh, hold on a second, Dan. I Come grabbed on. the wrong one. <laughs> and I grabbed the wrong one. <laughs> you can't blame it, Mike. Dan, you should have said something. You're sitting right there. I couldn't see. Oh, somebody's got to blame somebody for this other than himself. All right. Yeah, all right. Well, I grabbed the mic that was closest to me. Well, you know. All right, Dan, what's going on? Well, that's awesome. Um, I've been married now seven years. Okay. Um, you get married when you're 18. Well, yeah. I mean, right after. Well, I feel like yeah. second year of college. Here we go. Okay. Now, um, my wife is a tad underdeveloped in the vaginal region. Underdeveloped? Okay. Well, this is what the doctor said. She is only about as large as maybe a 14 or 15 year old girl. Ooh. Okay. It's a fresh marriage. Well,. Uh, like I said, we've been married seven years, you know, so it's kind of weird. Um, once we get into it and we've gone for a little while, she opens up a little bit, so it's a little easier. Um, I myself, though, I'm just a tad over nine inches long, and I'm about five and a half inches in diameter at the base of the head. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of gather what kind of problem this causes. But let me explain the diameter thing. It's not as if it's five and a half inches across, like the size of a, a tea saucer. Well, no, it's just... It, it's, yeah. it's circumference. Exactly. It's like your around, waist. Around. Yeah, your waist uh, from the front may be um, 17 inches across, but around it's 35 inches. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, Still, I, I think five and a half is pretty big. Well, yeah, the, um, I've, the girls I dated before her, you know, even even to them, and they were, you know, normally developed. They're like, well, you're just a little big. I never measure the circumference of my penis. There's certain things you just don't want to know. <laughs> well, like you I'm, know, it's just, I, well, I was in a frat when I was in college, and we had a, a cheerleader as a member of our sister sorority. She got a little drunk one night and decided she wanted to measure it, so that's how I found out. Right. You know, hey, shit happens, right? Part of my French. Uh, All right, listen, Jackal. I'm putting him on hold for a second. See, if you have a spindly penis, you don't need to know the circumference. And if um, you're getting all D's and fails in high school, you don't need to take the SAT. It's really like the same thing. I see. Now, Dan, right. I want to talk about Dan for a second. I'm sort of... I see Dan has a legitimate problem to some degree. Yeah. I don't... Um, there's a part of me that doesn't like him, though. <laughs> Are you jealous? <laughs> that could be part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I... I see. I don't know if he's stupid or just kind of a prick. I'm not sure. Dan? Yes. What's up with you? Well, no, well, to defray your first concern, I'm not a prick. <laughs> I'm not um, I'm not confident of myself in that way. I mean, yes, I have an aura of confidence about me, but it... Well, sure, you got a, you got a nine-and-a-half-inch penis. Well, I mean, you know, it's just the fact that, you know... Okay, Dan, uh, listen. Uh, well, Hold on, Dan, shut up. We can't start the show this way. What is okay. your question? You're too big, your wife's too small, right? Okay, that, that's... What are you going to do? What are you going to do about you it? You talk to her doctor about it. Um, yes, and he basically what he says is you have to get into it. Right, Well, I that's mean, right. you know, I give her oral sex. Um, I start out by giving her a massage. Give okay, her oral, oral sex and lubrication. Exactly. And a uh, position that's sort of copacetic for her and uh, you, and that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then whenever she taps out, uh, you got to tap out. You know, it's like that, uh, that um, it's like wrestling. When she taps out, you got to get off her. You can't keep pounding on her. Well, you know. Okay, so what's your next question? Okay, and that kind of leads into my, my next question coming around. I can go for a long time. And yeah. I don't know how maybe it's mentally to uh, adjust myself so that I can get mine when she gets hers, how I can do it. But, I mean... You want to speed yours up? I Yeah, I'd like to because I've actually had myself time before. I've actually had... Same chair later? I've, I've actually had penetrating intercourse for roughly 45 minutes to right. almost an hour. Before uh, reaching, I, I just, I'm, I'm tiring. I'm tiring. <laughs> My ass hurts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan. 
Hey, Dan. Yes, sir. I don't know. Don't you think uh, this is one of those, uh, my penis is so big and I F for so long, uh, there's, there's that it's quality. really destroying my life? Yeah, there's that quality to it. But also there's something really in person going I mean, they, look, they were buried in their 18, problem number one. Uh, number two, they have this mechanical problem, and uh, they don't seem to be able to overcome it just with the quality of their relationship that they've uh, developed since they were teenagers. Yeah. Uh, and Dan talks like a tractor mechanic on a quaalude, yeah. and I just can't take that. He just has to, you know, he loves his wife, you have to figure this out. There's not, nothing can be done. <laughs> what do you think we're going to do, Dan? All right, but he has a tremendous penis. His wife has a uh, small vagina, or virgina, uh, Dan. <laughs> and uh, what are you going to do? People have bigger problems than Dan. Yep. All right, Dan, you got to learn to focus and uh, orgasm a little bit faster. I think that was uh, the follow-up. Or, or figure something out. Just figure something out. Use your imagination. Okay. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LVE-191. All the girls are uh, looking over here, Lisa, Sherry, and Ann. Why? I don't know. They're, they're normally looking down. They kind of have pusses on Or they're them. looking at each other. Uh, they seem to be interested in something that's going on in here. You just look so cute tonight. What's There's got to be something, something else. Wrong. Yeah, yeah, something's wrong. Something's, something's wrong. going on in here. Mike, Mike, please. Were they talking about the big penis, uh, Mike? Oh, All right. Mike All right, I'm just moving forward here. Yeah. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. Ace Rockola here with the medium-sized penis. The hung one, Dr. Dr. Drew over there, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Daryl Hammond is going to be in here tomorrow night from Saturday Night Live. He's probably the most talented of the bunch. Does um, a million impersonations uh, from Clinton to uh, Phil Donahue and nails them all. So uh, I'm going to look forward to talking to him tomorrow night and getting him to do a few of those. I met him a couple of mornings ago on the uh, morning show, and he's a real nice guy. <laughs> and he seems like a trooper, so uh, I think we can get him to do that. Also, I brought in, remember last night I was talking about that wart cream? Right. Yep. Uh, I got some information about it. Uh, it is an immune modifying drug. It's, it sort of stimulates interferon, interestingly. Uh, and I, I'm not sure I understand the pronunciation. Imiquimod. Imiquimod. That's what it looks like. It sounds uh, more like a supermodel. Yeah. And where do you get it? Uh, physician. I mean, it, it's something. It's How do you spell it? I M I Q U I M O D. Mm hmm. All right. So uh, if you have warts on your Pepe, that's uh, that's yeah, a good thing. It's not for women. It's not for you know. It's not for uh, inside stuff. But it's for it's topical. Yeah, right. Topical. They have topical stuff for uh, women's um, coochie parts, right? Uh, mm, it's a little, uh, not really. Not really. Yeah. They don't have stuff they can put um, outside of. Yeah, on the skin part. Sure. That's what I'm asking. Yes, but not on the inside part. Okay. Here we go, Kim. Yes. Hey, you're 25. Yes. Um. This is just for Dr. Drew. Kim faxed us. Here's a fax. Oh, oh, it's not the love letter fax you got? No. Um, 25. I've had an abnormal pap smear last two months. Um, or sorry, uh, last month, uh, two weeks ago, I had a col coloposcopy. Coloscopy. Coloposcopy. <laughs> coloposcopy. And the uh, biop cells. Uh, well, you just, it's a long fax, so you tell us what happened. Well, basically, I had an abnormal pap smear, and they did a biopsy to see if I had a cervical cancer. And I don't have cervical cancer, but I'm having surgery uh, at the beginning of next month to have the cells removed before they become cancerous. Like a cone biopsy or something? Yeah, that's what it's called, a cone mm -hmm. biopsy. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if it's going to affect my ability to have children. Uh, I don't know the data off the top of my head. I understand it can impact somewhat on cervical competence, but I don't know what the risk is. I mean, basically, there's a certain period during the pregnancy where the ability of the cervix to stay closed is, becomes important. Well, you can't have sex at night, right? No. <laughs> no. Well, no. so that would affect it to some degree. To some degree, but also its ability to retain the pregnancy in the uterus. That you mean like the the, um, the Tupperware oh. lid uh, gets a little um, um, mal-shaped or uh, loose, and it can fall out and let the um, <laughs> turkey hash uh, fall out. I mean, is that what it is? That's what it is. But uh, but it, uh, again, I don't think that's a substantial risk, though, Kim. Okay. Well, okay. I'm not going to have children for quite some time now, but I yeah. just wanted so, to know for the future. Can she so freeze? Can she freeze something? Uh, yeah, but no, 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 Adams. What you mean, like an embryo or something? Like an egg. This is oh. not the. This is not the issue of conception. This is the issue of sort of retaining the developing right child. Okay, the so they could always get an egg. So if she couldn't hold the child, they could uh, implant a, the a egg into somebody. Yes, yeah, a surrogate or something like that. Like Burt Reynolds. Wouldn't that make a great comedy? Oh God. 
But listen, Kim, yeah. thank God you got the PAM. This is why young women have to get those PAMs, because if, it, if that had gone another year, that would have been cancer, and that would have been it. Really? Absolutely. Kill you? Yes. Wow. Once, once cervical cancer gets away, that's it. It's done. Hey, uh, how long has this PAP smear been around? Mm, I don't know. Good question. I mean, Sorry, at least 50 years. I at think. least 50 years. But what did they do before that? Did women I just drop know. dead left I, and right I, of cervical cancer? I guess. You think so? I think so. Well, you know what they did before? They, they had all these very, very strict mores against having sex. Oh. And so, you know, the, if you're going to get cervical cancer, your, your wrists are really, the people that get it are people that start sexual activity at a young age, have multiple partners, have warts or herpes. Yeah, but don't you think, and I brought this up, the uh, sex at a young age and multiple partners thing... Put is, your risk for warts or herpes. And isn't that why that's on it's, that? People are trying to sort that out. I mean, it's like saying, uh, because, it, what is it, just a good or, vaginal jostling that's going to cause the cancer? It's or, like or people who ride horses are yeah, going to yeah, get it too? Right. Or some other factor that has not yet been identified. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine what your penis could do to people. They wouldn't even know it. Well, okay. <laughs> Brittany. Yes. You're 28. Yes. What's going on? Um, I'm dating a guy who's 24, and I've been with him for six months. I'm also dating a guy, seriously, for three and a half years, and he is 29. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to do. I'm very sexually active with the 24-year-old, mm -hmm. and I'm not with the 29-year-old. Mm -hmm. Do they know about each other? No. Well... I shouldn't say that they do actually know. The 24-year-old thinks I date. I'm. He thinks I date a lot. Mm. I live in Chicago. I'm single. Um, I have a really good job. Uh, I have a nice condo. He thinks I make a lot of money, and he thinks I like date all the time. Mm -hmm. And this 29-year-old, which I've been dating for ever and a day, uh -huh. our first year we did have sex. And then it well, tw why, are you, why are you still hanging out you with the You don't have sex though? anymore? Yeah. We don't have sex anymore. You're not in love with the guy? Why, why are you still hanging out with him? Because it's convenient. Well, you got a 24-year-old. Convenient for her what? What do you get? You don't get anything. No. You, you don't I, like the guy. But I do like him. I mean, we, we're friends. Uh -oh. Brittany, are you good looking? I'm okay. Yeah. She's one of those good looking people. I'll tell you, when a woman is good looking, uh, they can get away with murder. I'm not getting away with murder. Please. I don't think I am. You're murdering two souls with one oh, vagina. I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know, I think I've worked the word vagina in six times in the first eight minutes of this show, Drew. A new personal best for me. <laughs> I, I worked the vagina in seven times once when we did a remote, but that was wind-aided, and it didn't go in the books. Oh. Okay, but yeah. tell me this. If I want to stay with this guy that's three years plus, <clears throat> which if he asked me to marry him, I probably would because he knows me inside and the out. The 29-year-old? Yeah. Why would you what marry? You, you're in this uh, sexless sham of a relationship. Yeah, I agree with Adam for a change. Really? I'm but I my love point. them. You, oh. Right. What, what, what was your... I mean, what, we don't have sex or anything, but we're like the best of friends. He's always there for me. This 24-year-old's like some street punk, basically. Yeah. yeah why, the guy that okay. I met who is... All right, so why do your relationships have to be either or? Why do they have to be... Sort of. Uh, a I'm getting tired of wait. the game. Ooh, no, 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 no. She, well, she's got a voice like a girl or two. I've dated my life. Yeah. My spidey sense is tingling. Yeah. No, I'm just getting tired of the game. That's well, but here's your, here's what you're doing. You're either dating with a guy who's not really genuinely available to you in a deep emotional way, or you're dealing with a guy who's dangerous and uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, unemotional because uh, you're not available emotionally because he's dangerous. So what, what what were your parents like when they were growing up? When you were growing up? My parents are fine. They're still married. Were they? Are they just very detached? They live in separate rooms. No, my parents are married. They're a happy couple. Yeah, they see. There's something. See, this, this is the mo of all these people. No, I no, I have baggage. What from? Just so, past relationships. I mean, I've been engaged three times and I broke it off. Why? I didn't want to settle down yet. Okay. See, now here's the thing. Here's but, what. Here's what we won't get to. There's something going on with her dad. There's an unspoken thing. There's something in the family. No, the family not. doesn't talk about it. No, she my doesn't know about it. Well, I'm not talking about you're, molestation you're, you're, no, or no, anything. You're, just, you're not aware of it, whatever it is. There's just something going on. No, my dad make a good living. Does your dad make a good living? 
Oh yeah. Are you looking yeah. for somebody? Are you looking? Uh, 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 see, I'm picturing a guy who makes a good living. I come from a very big family. I'm the youngest. Yeah. Everyone's married. You didn't get, uh, you hey, didn't get attention. Daddy's, daddy's girl. No, no, she did too did much. Too much too attention. Much, yeah. Oh no, I think Daddy worked a lot. Was out a lot. No, I think too much. Too bad? much attention. Too bad. All right, hold on a second, Brittany. All right, this is a real fifty-fifty bet. Although, you know, she's in such strong denial, she may tend to agree with you, Drew. <laughs> hey, can you float me a buck, buddy? Uh, I'm a little light tonight. Thank you. <laughs> That's so anticlimactic. When you win your dollar back. Can I have the other one? The other <laughs> <story>? <laughs> that came out of my wallet. Not. Okay. I go with uh, Daddy, uh, possibly an attorney. Uh, or a uh, real estate business, a slimy white guy business, but white collar. Right. Uh, likes a few martinis with his lunch. Yeah, well, that's fine. Uh, possibly has one of those nugget watches. <laughs> I'm going with the nugget watch, maybe the gold nugget watch, and possibly even a pinky ring, but not a mafia type guy, just one of these uh, waspy type businessy guys. Probably has a um, probably has a mistress that no one knows about. Works a lot. And uh, white collar. Well, so I think you're picking up on some of the same stuff. That a lot of the sort of idealized images. Attorney has, or real estate but, development, but, something like but that. But a lot of the idealized images she has about herself and her father and her relationship with her father are, are faulty. They're not real. Okay. And so I'm going to go with she's baby of the family, daddy's girl. Everybody idealized her. She lived in a perfect, what seemed to be a perfect situation that she can't let go of. So I'm with that, but her and dad didn't spend an, enough time together. No, not real time. He may have bought her a pony, but he wasn't around to um, uh, well, trot her around on it. Okay. Brittany? You're totally wrong about my father. <laughs> What's he do for a living? My dad is nothing like that. My dad's a cowboy. Yeah. With a, with a gold yes, nugget watch? A gold nugget watch. <laughs> oh, for he wears sake. silver. You are totally wrong. Silver nugget watch? <laughs> no. <laughs> What's he do for a living? My dad is in real estate. No! He's not... He's a cowboy. Listen, cowboy all, dude, listen, cowboy all, yeah, yeah, totally yeah. that's so, you know why? Because he calls himself Honest Irv, where you get a big <laughs> square deal, big as Texas, and he's full of crap. <laughs> and these attorney, these uh, real estate guys are all slime buckets. Right, you were going to say attorney? <laughs> Attorneys, attorney. too. Uh, no, I said attorney or real estate. <laughs> that's what he said. All right. No, I know. What kind of real estate? He's not showing houses. No, he's in big corporate real estate. Oh, he said corporate and real estate. Yeah. Yeah. So now he's building real estate. He right. sells buildings. Okay. Let me explain this. Uh -huh. Guys who wear boots and ten-gallon hats, unless uh, their name is Haas and they're on the farm, they're scum. Oh, God, guys who drive around in an El Dorado with a cowboy hat. That is not scum. All right. So what? So what was the nature of the relationship that you can't let go of it? Of my parents. Your dad. Did he spend time with you? Yeah. <laughs> um, but not enough, right? No, my dad's always been there for me. Okay. He's always been there financially. What about emotionally? No, Adam, no he's stop pushing. Up. and emotionally. I'm closer to my mom uh -huh. than I am my dad. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> You're We're, push We're pushing. <laughs> I don't know, Drew. I think I got this one. I don't know what to do. Well, I... I, I want to do one thing or the other. I need to make a decision. We think you need to individuate from your family of origin. That's what we're saying, basically. So but you're, you're still you're caught up. Just you're, be my little rebel that I am, and just stay. No, simple. no. And blow them both off. No, <laughs> that you're still caught up in acting something out is what we're telling you. That that baggage didn't start with screwed up relationships, and that there's something much more substantial going on here. But I don't have baggage with these two guys. Uh, you can listen to me or not, Sorry. and uh, and that. Unless you deal with that, you are going to be very unhappy in your relationships going forward. I mean, now now you've gone from you keep going from one extreme to the other, to the other, to the other, and uh, until you find out who you are separate from your family of origin and begin to have real relationships, you're going to be very right, unhappy. Get into therapy, but Brittany, I got to get this buck off of Drew. <laughs> Seriously, you didn't spend that much time with uh, Hoss, did you? Dad was perfect, wasn't he? My dad was not perfect. Oh. Ooh. Well, she's just saying that because you said it was. No, it's I'm just not. No, my dad is not perfect. He worked a lot? My dad did not work a lot. He He's didn't... retired, in fact, right now. He didn't work a lot when you were growing up? No, my dad, like, retired when he was, like, 40. Oh, all right. So you spent a lot of time with him when you were young? Yeah. So you, you, I, like, grew up with him. All right. I mean, I'm the, I'm the youngest. So. But this is what... Uh, uh, the, can, now, let me have this. Yeah. I said you were the baby of the family, daddy's girl. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, wait. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Just wait. Okay, if I want to, I have one more question. Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay, so we'll, we'll get off the family thing. The guy that I've been dating for over three years plus, if I want to try, what can I possibly do to make him 
or not make him, but what can I possibly do to put the spice back in our lives so that we can start having sex? You can fall in love with him again. Again. Yeah, Ooh, totally. Unless that happens. Sorry. Unless that happens, it's not mm, going yeah. to work. It's not yeah, going to work. I know her. I know that, Brittany. I know those types. Man, I can hear that. Yeah, there, you know what? Here's the deal. Um, I feel, people are like dogs. There's a, there's a few breeds. But, I mean, name as many dog breeds as you can name. You get to about 12 or 14 and you're done. That's it with people. Even less with people. Hey, give me one of those dollars, Drew. I thought no, we split that one. They're, they're both mine to begin with. Yeah. All right. It's worth, it. right. it's worth no, a try. No, I wasn't. See, we couldn't get anything out of her. I had that corporate real estate thing. Did you hear that, though? My daddy's a cowboy. He's nothing like... And I was thinking, oh, my God, there's picture of some guy from, like, a Marvel, Champs man. commercial. Yeah, yeah. Out, uh, you know, crack of dawn, a stack of hay out in the, out in the barn. Like urban cowboy. Real estate developer. Yeah. All right, all right. Hold on. Let me sell something here. Uh, I'll find a good call here. Ryan's 19. Is it a bad idea to sleep... Um, what what with a best friend with a, oh is that what that is yeah. with a best friend yeah Ryan absolutely. okay we have thoughts on this uh, we're gonna form them the uh, Ryan shut up we're gonna form these thoughts during this uh, little uh, three minute break all right it's actually four minutes but I just said three minutes for so people to stick around and then we're gonna come back and spoo them on you all right all right all right just uh, hang tight there you have oh, we got a lot of mileage out of that carrot top drop. Care Trap Trap. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Forget about that fax number. You know I don't like reading. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, people give me scripts and, and stuff, and they say, uh, Could you read the script? And I go, um, Put it on tape. I, <laughs> Unless you told me after writing some books. <laughs> Drew and I, maybe me droning into a tape, it'll serve you right. I didn't mean you put it on I tape. I mean, you know, dig up Orson Welles. Okay. Or, um, you know, have uh, Chuck Heston or something narrated. Drew uh, asked me today, my, I have a birthday coming up. And um, actually, I have two coming up. Oh, no, no, it's just the one. <laughs> and the, I just want to confuse the hell out of Sherry over there. You had, no, he oh, hasn't been sober no. at all, don't worry. Um, I have a birthday coming up. Drew said he was wanting to get me a, a couple of books and what I read them. I don't know what it is about me, but um, oh, I guess it's like I'm like a virgin that um, all the guys in high school want to nail. But as soon as I've announced to people, it'd be the greatest scam in the world. Those of you who enjoy reading, just announce to everybody that you don't much care for reading, and people go nuts. Oh, the wonders, the joys. The, and, and then they start telling you about how much they love reading, which uh, is always like, uh, hey, F you. You know, like, here's here's a story I get all the time. I tell people, hey, listen, I don't read very well. Uh, I have difficulty with it. Uh, it's not something I did well with in school, and I don't really enjoy it now. Oh, <laughs> you don't know what you're missing. I could remember as a youth curling up in bed and reading in delight. You know, a Moby Dick or Steppenwolf or, or um, uh, the... the Pass. Tess, <laughs> Catcher in the Rye, oh, this world that you don't know. And I'm like, hey, a hole? I don't read. What are you rubbing it in my face? Stop it. Right. You wouldn't do that if, if, if you're talking about, like, travel. Like, if you said to someone, yeah, um, I, I never been to Hawaii. I can't yeah. afford it. You know, oh, oh, oh it's, a, it's, a, it's a tropical land People of wonderment. Do do they do? That. They oh, rub yeah. that in your face? Sure. Oh, screw them. You've never been to Hawaii. You've never been? Well, uh, I guess if you have money, you can do that. But I mean, to the person who uh, has money. But if you don't, if the person's poor, it's kind of cruel, right? Right. right. Anyway, well, I have a couple things I wanted you to read. I thought you would benefit from. So what I tell you? Get it on tape. That's right. I'll listen to I it in my car. I recall getting you uh, your uh, Christmas gift was a, a book uh, about pies. And Woody Allen. Oh, and oh, Woody I, Allen. I read that. Oh, Drew read that. I, I read his book. Oh. <laughs> Where is that book? All right, and on. it was a trilogy, though. It was all his, all of his written stuff. Yeah, where is Without that? Without feathers. Do I have so it? you took it? No, he's got it. Uh-oh. But I wrote it. No, you know, the pie book is nice because that's like a reference book. You know, you want to know the origins of pumpkin pie or something like that. You just look that up. <sighs> all right, anyway, where were we, Drew? Ryan. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Oh, oh you're asking me about the uh, MTV Movie Awards? Oh, yeah. When is that? About a week. No, I'm not going. It's my uh, form of uh, silent protest. Those a-holes, they don't treat Drew and I right at all. Uh, well, didn't we go last year? Yeah. What did we do? Sit in the very back? Yeah. People thought it was some kind of sketch. Like, a, yeah, like, like we're, we're going to come down on a cable right, or right, something. Right. <laughs> People kept saying, hey, what are you guys doing way back here? Right. They're like, uh, this is the tickets they gave us. 
You be doing or, something back here? You doing you doing something, something like uh, what do you do? Like uh, hold up a banner or something? <laughs> nope. This is the seats we got. And um, uh, they didn't want to give us tickets, did they? Well, they didn't. No. Your wife wrestled it away from them. Yep. Didn't they say like, hey, we don't have any more? Right. MTV's not real fond of their talent. <laughs> I think uh, MTV's take is, uh, if you're on Art Network, you got to suck. <laughs> isn't that kind of the, uh, isn't that what they... Don't make you feel. You won't see any of their talent presenting anything or uh, doing anything. Uh -uh. Like, if, if NBC had a had uh, the NBC award show... It's the NBC talent. Yeah. The way you, of promoting their Wouldn't talent. you see Seinfeld yeah. uh, on there handing yeah. something out? I see all of them. Yeah. MTV's kind of ashamed. Uh, and they call it talent, technically. I'm just giving it a label so that we can uh, decipher what we're talking about here. And I'm not referring to you guys. No, no, that's true. And there isn't much talent on the, <laughs> on the, on the network, and, but I think they're ashamed of the little talent they have. And Drew and I are uh, being part of that. So, um, no, we don't... Um, I'm not going. But, Drew, you're going to go? I'm going to go. Your wife's driving you nuts. No, I, She's it, listening. That's what that pause was. No, I, I enjoy She's it. She's driving you nuts. No. Okay. I want to go too. Good riddance. They can kiss my ass. Ryan. Hey. Hey, you're 19. Yeah. Um, all right. I have a, two questions, actually. Uh, one's drug related, the other one's relationship stuff. Hold on. Hold on. Are you going to be able to get tickets? Are you going to pay for them? Or are you going to get like a scalper or something? They actually asked me to be part of the promotional media, and I don't know what that means. Mm, that means you're getting um, you're getting coffee for Dean Kane. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, that's something like that. I don't I don't think you're actually they're going to put you. But I thought the fact that they even thought of us in that regard was kind of interesting. Mm, there's something up with that, yeah. Drew. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was. They try to keep the cameras away from their own oh, folks. I, I think it was going to be a radio thing, frankly. Okay. Oh, what they mean, meant is they wanted you to talk about it on, on our show. show. Yeah, <laughs> right. Are you kidding? Oh. I know I may be doing this by doing it, but that uh, that goddamn MTV wouldn't promote Loveline if someone held a gun to their head. Uh -huh. They've never run a Loveline spot for anything at any cost, ever. They ran it about five of them for five minutes five months ago when the new season came out. It was the same commercial, and that was it. Yeah. They never do anything to promote this show. Uh -huh. Screw them. Ryan, hey. what's going on? Um, all right, well, this girl um, that I've been hanging out with for a while, you know, we got to be wicked good friends, and um, I ended up sleeping with her. And we both agreed that we didn't want to go out just because neither of us can handle relationships, but um, so, but we're still sleeping together. Uh, and let, me, let me sort of uh, decipher that situation for you. Usually one of the people pipes up and says, I, I can't do I can't do this. And it was all me neither. Right. But the one, the one that comes in second with the Me Too usually has entirely different designs. Right. And, See, that's that, what you, I, and that usually is the woman. That's what I thought, but I, wasn't, I didn't even say anything afterwards, but that's what I was thinking, that I just wanted to be friends, and she was the first one to say it to me. And uh, I said, so yeah, I should, you know, definitely. I should pick it up on it or hoping you'd say otherwise. Mm, I don't know uh, about Believe that. me, she thinks... I, I, I'm, uh, either she underestimates how much she's going to get connected to you emotionally... Or she's hoping to change you. Never, never underestimate the power of the peanut, Drew. That's what my grandfather used to say to me. Really, Lotsy? That's right. Lotsy peanut. <laughs> Please, Drew. Would you have some reverence for the deceased? All right, Ryan. Are we done with Ryan? He had another question. No. Um, yeah, I just, I, I just got prescribed with Ritalin um, for attention deficit disorder, oh, and I was just wondering what the side effects were. You know, someone told me it was addictive. And it is addictive, and I have great concern about it for people uh, 19 and over using it, particularly if you have any family history of addiction. Well, or how does it? How does your uh, ADD manifest itself? Um, I just have a really hard time, like, concentrating, like, I can't collect my thoughts at all, you know, I'll be in a conversation and I'll just totally zone out and not be able to pay attention to anything that's going on. Does this make a difference, being on it? Yeah, it helped a lot, actually, when I first started taking it, oh. um, but the thing is, when it, it lasts about three and a half hours, yeah. and it, when it wears off, I feel, like, so much worse than I did before. Well, I there, are, there, are, there are different medications in the same well, you class. you got to keep taking it, right? That are longer-acting, and the, there's longer-acting versions of this, and you've got, you got to go ahead and talk. Make sure you're, you're working with somebody who's expert in this area, because it really is a treacherous medicine that needs to be used very carefully, particularly in adulthood. I mean, it, it's a very controversial area, and if it's helping you, great. All right. Rachel. Rachel? Oh, hello. Hey, you're 23. What's Hi. going on? Whatever your real name is. I am, in fact, 23. <laughs> right. Um, I, I want to start out and say that I don't think this is necessarily a problem, but mm -hmm. the people around me kind of think it's, you know, a little strange. But for 
um, maybe not even strange, but for about the last probably six years, I have been primarily attracted to black men. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Same with Drew. What's that? Same with Drew. <laughs> it's a burden, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and I... They, I have a lot of friends who are like wannabe therapists and social worker type people who say that there's more to it than just physical attraction. And I was well, just wondering if you a, all had an opinion. Uh, it is a controversial issue you're bringing up, and uh, Drew doesn't like talking about any races. No, no, let me let me talk about this because white guys th- th- are always scared me, to talk about any races. No, let me finish. <laughs> Go ahead. For instance, uh, ten years ago, uh, if you had gotten a bunch of tattoos, we would have said, "Ooh, th- there's something going on there." You know, something, there's a reason you're doing that. Now you get a tattoo, and somebody goes, eh, that's style. That's the way it is today. Mm-hmm. And thank God we live in a time when interracial coupling, particularly your age and younger, is very common. People don't aren't so color sensitive. They're not really paying that much attention to the color, and so they're just dating people. Now, if you were compulsively preoccupied about that... Um, compulsively preoccupied. I mean, that's all you can think about. I mean, it's sort of a preoccupation of yours. I like well, you, function. You, you, well, I don't mean like that. I mean, <laughs> I mean it, it just, you wouldn't consider, it's like a guy saying, I wouldn't consider anything else other than a blonde woman. You know, it's like, mm, wh- oh, well, what is that? What, why, what is that all about? And you, you wonder then if there's something, and there's psychoanalysts have various theories about this, of being sort of symbols of power and whatnot that you need to sort of hang on. You to. ever masturbate to Sanford and Son? Uh, me? Mm-hmm. No. no, I don't have cable but, though. So you know, okay. I, I, I don't know. What, what are your friends? What are your friends telling you? Um, well, actually, one in particular has gotten into that thing that you just mentioned about power and this kind of thing, and mm-hmm. it just it completely struck me by total surprise. I, I no, nothing that I've ever. Well, ever it, it actually, some people even. Uh, Do you have a big ass? No. Some people even. <laughs> well, what are you, yeah, you should really be going for a white guy said, right? But but there's some people even look at it as sort of fetishistic. I'll, I'll recommend a book to you called uh, Female Perversions. What the hell is the, the author's name? Uh, it's a movie too now, huh? Mm, not that I'm aware of. Oh, okay. it's, it's a it's a anal, it's an analyst writing a oh, okay. rather rather academic. Oh, that book. Uh, militant lesbian. Uh, what the hell? You show that? me you show me that book on the airplane. Oh, yeah. See yeah. if I read, I would have read. No, it. that was Camille Paglia. That was different. That's the militant lesbian. Oh. Uh, but well, most it, women it, who write books are uh, militant lesbians, are, are they not, Drew? If you're interested in uh, in looking to that further, I recommend that book. Okay. Female perversion. Female perversion. All right, so Rachel. Yeah. Would you date a white man? Y- yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, but yeah. Do you have a white? What about a white man like myself with the hair of a black man? You know, I've actually never seen you. It's very nappy, my hair. Yeah. See, just walking down the street, driving, whatever. Those people who would turn my head nine times out of ten are black. Yeah. Right. Well, so people have that. Listen, yeah. there's certain... I mean, why, why would your friends take issue with that as opposed to if you were, like, into tall man or short man or whatever? I mean, it's funny yeah. that the, at this day and age... Certain people, people get into certain that. cultures. Like, I, I know uh, certain guys that are, are into Asians. They love those Asian women. Yeah. They're Asian boys, too, actually. <laughs> but uh, they love the Asian culture. Okay. To me, I'm into the good-looking culture with the big jugs. There you go. Whichever one that is, count me in. That's okay. fetishistic. I don't though. care where you are. All right. I don't care where but, you're but, from. But it's sort of like... So what? You know what I mean? That's your taste, and that's fine. Right. All right. You want to sell one of these things? No. You know, it's it's better, though. I'll tell you. And I hate to sound uh, racist here, but... You racist? Imagine that. Well, Sexist, racist? You listen. Don't, those terms listen, never apply. Listen. All, Shocking. Uh, listen. There's differences in cultures, for Christ's sake. Yes, there are differences. We, we swear to God, we can't admit that. For some reason, everyone's the same. It's all the same. Everyone's the same. No, they're not the same. You go to different countries, they're different. Yeah. Okay? Well, That's a different culture. Plus, the society made them different. So, they're different, and, and that's fine. And uh, then they come over here, and then they bring their culture. It makes them different. That's fine. It's not all good, not all bad. All right. <clears throat> oh, hi, Heidi heard me talking to Smack about the MTV. <laughs> good, good. Let, let them cancel the show. We'll put, it, we'll put it somewhere better. Somewhere that advertises it, for Christ's sake. Our producers in the MTV TV show showed up here just now. We haven't seen them in six months. They right, just but no, they up. hate MTV, too, please. All right, so now it's like I have Tourette's. All right, here's what I'm saying. I'm saying let's Black go Black men like white women, okay? Yeah. And if you're, the, if you're a white woman who's not getting a whole bunch of dates in the white community, you can be the belle of the ball in the black community. No, I, you're, you're really into territory. You're I swear about. to God, here's I'm one, right. Here's one thing about that, though. Imagine uh, You know I'm right, you sensible people who listen about, to me. Think about how black women must feel if they know that the majority of black men want to date white women. You ever think about that? Yeah, that's bad. That's, yeah, it's not good, is it? No, it isn't. 
But I didn't create that. I'm just uh, just commenting on it. All right, Drew. You see what I'm saying, though? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to sell the next call? No. Okay, we'll be back. Be right back. Larger penises. Uh, okay, Drew. What did that say? Mike's hot. I, I didn't hear it. What did uh, it don't, say? don't play stupid, buddy. Mike's were hot. It's all right. We're back. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. Yeah, black males have larger penises. Okay, true. Can I just finish here? You got a call picked out there? Let's go. <laughs> You're in the strangest mood tonight. You really are. Hey, listen, you've been saying that three times a week for the last month, so this is just my mood. I'm enjoying myself. I'm glad to be here. I really am. I was talking to an old buddy of mine tonight, and I was realizing how miserable I was in my past life and uh, how easy this gig is. Mike. Yeah. You're 20. Yeah. What's going on? Show. Thanks. Yeah, I got a question. I uh, went camping uh, last fall well, Thursday, and I uh, got back Saturday and um, found out that this girl I've been dating now for a couple of weeks, we had sex for the first time this weekend on this camping trip, and I found out she has poison ivy. And yesterday I looked down on myself and found out that uh, my penis is burning. Like, it feels like it's a sunburn pain. Hmm. And I feel like, uh, I don't know if it's poison ivy, but I, have po I don't have poison ivy anywhere else. But I also am kind of embarrassed to ask her about it because... Where does she have poison ivy? She has it on her face and her arm. Really? What, what are we doing with her arm? <laughs> I don't know. She, she didn't, oh. go, like, really touch me. Oh, I see, there. yeah. How so. fascinating. So I have to start uh, working um, the calamine uh, into the masturbatory <laughs> regimen. Uh, you know, they should really have lubricant now with calamine. <laughs> <laughs> where are you? Are you at work, Mike? Yeah, I'm at work. Where are you working? At a pizza place. That's great. <laughs> Is it good pizza? Uh, it's, it's cheap, so it's it got to be east of the Mississippi with poison ivy, not poison <laughs> oak. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, or at least Midwest. I don't know. I, I guess I would always confuse the two myself. Yeah, well, we have poison yeah, oak out here. You said poison ivy, so I don't know what. So people say poison is. ivy out here, though. Oh, really? It, it's, no, it's, they say poison oak out here. It's mm, poison oak. Uh, hold on a second, uh, fantasy land, Drew. Lisa, Sherry, uh, Ann, engineer Mike. It's Russ, R H R U E U S. Russ is the. Is the people say the poison ivy out here, don't they? They poison oak. No, they say ivy. What? They may be talking about poison oak, uh, or is it the same thing? No, different. They may be talking about poison oak, but poison ivy is what they say. All right, anyway. I think it's uh, from that um, the, that uh, song. Drug Boy George, huh? No, I was <laughs> I was going to go back uh, further to the uh, uh, the uh, what the hell the group that black group is saying. Uh, and then along came Jones. Boom, boom, boom. Poison of it. Uh, okay. Uh, Black males have larger Oh, no, stop. Zero, stop. Stop, stop. All right, listen, Mike. Uh, it's a very interesting situation. It's you don't know that group is no. in poison no. Oh, my certainly, God. It certainly could be the poison ivy. Uh -huh. uh, however, I mean, it's interesting because these are the symptoms of herpes, too. Okay? Oh, really? I don't mean to alarm it's you, but... Just, it's red and it itches, but... I mean, it, it's look... And herpes is red and itches. That's how it starts out. And then it's sort of blister and ulcerates. And it really would be hard to tell it from poison oak, Frank. It's a bad case. Oh, really? Late uh, at night when you're sleeping, poison ivy comes a creeping around. So, what do you suggest I do? Uh, I suggest you get some more history from this girl and make sure that it is some. Well, some. I, I want to know, but it's kind of like I don't want to like volunteer some information that I, you know, I don't want to scare her. Hey, you know, look, away from me. you're, you know, you're just. She, you've been close enough to camp with her and have sex with her. Why don't you just uh, share some of this information, find out what's going on. Okay. Uh, use some Cortade over the counter in the meantime, see if that doesn't cool this off. If, and, I, would uh, wait, if I would wait it off and think it, like maybe use some kind of uh, poison ivy lotion, and then... Like uh, I said, use Cortade... Like if, if, if I wait... Is it, uh, right. Use cor Cortade over the counter, uh, give it about another three to five days. If it starts blistering, I suggest you have a doctor take a look at it. But I would talk to the girl about it, see what, what exactly she's got going. If she has just stuff limited to her sort of abdomen, genital areas, thighs, mm -hmm. that sort of thing, I, I would uh, have somebody see it maybe sooner. Let me tell you, when you go camping with a girl, you get sex. It is the law of the jungle. It is, it's, it's nature taking its course. That's what they mean. They mean intercourse. They don't tell you that part. They just say course. I see. It's short for intercourse. I, if, if you go camping with a woman, you will have sex. When she says, 
As a matter of fact, you ought to try to nail her right there. Like, if you say to a girl, hey, you'd like to go camping, and she says, okay, I would try to have sex with her right there. Because that's such a... An, she's saying... She's it, agreeing to that. Yeah, you're saying, would you like to have sex with me in the woods? And they're, they're, yes. That's what they're saying. Okay. I, I, I'm telling you, if the, um, if the Pope went camping with Janet Reno, he would nail her. <laughs> right, right by the Coleman. I'm serious. I, if you, I, I, why would I dispute your... your Drew, I'm going to give you another clue on this band. Charlie Brown, ba -ba -dum -ba -dum, Charlie Brown, ba -dum -ba -dum, he's a clown. That Charlie Brown, he's going to get caught. Do, do you know caught. who it is? Yeah. I have no idea. I can't think. Buddy always picking on me. Who is it, Jerry? Yeah. Did you know? On Poison Ivy, it's yeah. the Coasters. The Coasters. Yes. True, please. What happened to you? All right, where were we? Yeah, All right. I wanted to find out if uh, that... Uh, um, guy was making a Let's thick crust pizza. Let's go through some calls. We've, uh, we've taken like four calls today. Angela, you're 14. Let's go, Drew. Yeah. Angela, what's going on? Um, for the past few months, I've been noticing more that I'm attracted to women as well as guys. I think uh, you'd find that most 14-year-olds have feelings like that, that they have same sex kinds of feelings. Okay, but I... I'm really interested in being with another female. Have you been with a male? Yeah. How old were you? Well, I haven't had sex. Oh. Well, what have you done with a male? Um, just kind of fooled around, made out a lot. And... No. Hmm. Right. And you didn't enjoy it that much? Well, yeah, I did, but I'm just... Want to try being with a woman? I would suggest that you cool out on both until you're clear about what's going on. I mean, I really, I just think experimentation just leads to more confusion. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, stay with that curiosity. That's fine. And maybe that will develop into something more mature, something more specific. Um, but just acting on curiosity at your age is going to lead to a lot of ambivalence and confusion, I would say. What's going on at home with you? Um, not much. Parents I mean, are together? Yeah, they are, and I was never abused as a child. They aren't fighting a lot or anything like that at home? Um, no, but I have a younger brother and sister who both have a disease. What's the disease? It's uh, muscular dystrophy. Oh, my God. Oh, that's rough. Ugh. That's a bad one, right, Drew? I mean, yeah, I'd have three kids and two with that. I mean, look, Angela, it's, it's natural enough you, you want to escape into something. Yeah. You know, uh, to get away from your feelings of, uh, of God knows what you're feeling. It could be anguish and depression. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And who knows what kind of parenting she's getting when the parents are preoccupied with two kids with muscular dystrophy and having siblings that they she knows are, you know, limited life expectancies. Is that know. how limiting is that? Well, people can live in the thirties and forties sometimes. Really? Sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, listen, I, I don't know much about that disease, but I know uh, people try hard to raise money for it, and that always means it's bad. It's two kids with it. Imagine that. Two, yeah. and she didn't have it. Yeah, how come? Uh, I have. Look up the... the no, all right, forget it. I, I think it's... No, nah, who cares? Go ahead. It's, it's moved. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, Angel, find other ways to take care of yourself than acting out like that. Those are things that are not going to particularly... They may feel gratifying and, and to get you away from your feelings for a few minutes, but ultimately it'll make you feel worse. Find well, some good imagine, friends. Imagine uh, mom and dad. Uh, good hobbies. you got three kids. Two of them uh, have uh, muscular dystrophy and one's a lesbian. That's a backbreaker. I'm just saying. Well, take, it's not leg some, it's, it, let me, right, let me Just take some, some time. Hey, mate, take some time. No, no, Don't experiment. No, here's the backbreaker. Not just she's yet. She's 14 and she's sleeping with boys and girls. That's what I meant. Okay. That's what I meant. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't say 14-year-old like That's man. where if, if God were making the perfect world, he'd make things nicer for people that were under stress rather than that much worse. Oh, uh, I'm telling you. If there is a God, he's a cruel one. <laughs> but the good news is that the devil's a lot nicer than people thought originally. <laughs> so it kind of balances out. Right, Drew? Yeah. All right, Angela, take care of yourself, and we just hate to see anything happen to you. So don't uh, just take give yourself a little time. Yeah, don't don't feel like yourself. you have to act on everything. All right, All right. Sally. Yeah. You're 23. Yep. What's Quick going question. on? Um, I heard that people who go on the pill sometimes have more trouble losing weight. Sometimes. 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 Okay. Um, is there any other way to kind of make things easier when I'm on my period other than going on the pill? You having real painful, heavy flows, or? Yeah. And have been, like, for my whole life. I just, I've never been to gynecologist and kind of wondered if there was... Have you been on the pill before? No. How overweight are you? Um, about 40 pounds, and I'm actually losing weight right now, so that's that may That may be a big part of why you're having the heavy periods. 
Okay. Uh, just being overweight sometimes. I mean, you, okay. uh, something you could do as a as a, a attempt is uh, really get diet and exercise going in, in, a, in a wholesale way. And, yeah, uh, that's where I am. So. Yeah, and don't worry so much about getting on hormones just yet. Yeah. Um, there are once that eating disorder gets into full swing, that period will dry right up, right, Drew? You can use <laughs> non steroidal agents like Motrin, that sort of thing, to try to deal with the crampiness. Certainly, there's evidence that vitamin D, C, and E may be of use to you. B6 sometimes. Other various B vitamins have been advocated. I mean, I would think a good multivitamin would be certainly in order. Okay. Right. Uh, but I think the a, a real serious conditioning exercise and a, and a diligent attempt at weight loss, and this whole thing may take care of itself. Okay. Shouldn't she start smoking to see if she can shed those pounds? Nope. Hey, Sally? Yeah. Yeah, you're fine. And, and don't worry. I, I've had uh, many girlfriend who was on the pill, and um, it didn't seem to make a difference. In terms of their gaining or losing weight? No, none of them got any, uh, you know, um, upper lip hair. Um, they were grouchy before they were on the pill, so I don't think that added to it. They didn't break out or anything like that. I mean, there's a lot of wives' tales uh, around this. Well, and uh, I'm here to tell you, well, once in a while it affects somebody, and then they just switch to pill. Right. Switch to a different kind of pill. You don't get cancer, you don't get fat, you don't get hairy. Believe me, I wouldn't stand for that as a boyfriend. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah, especially the cancer part. Could you imagine? All right, Drew. Ready to take a little break? Yes, I am. Okay. Love line. Love line. All righty. We're going to take a little 10-second uh, break, which uh, actually, since I'm coming clean tonight, it's really like 14 seconds, and we will be right back. This is Love Line on Radio Station. KROQ FM, Pasadena, Los Angeles. The world famous K Rock. Love Line is the name. Helping people is the stuff that we uh, are going to do. I want to do some oh. calls. Calls, calls, okay. calls. <laughs> all right. All right. Hey, Daryl Hammond is going to be here from Saturday Night Live. The guy does all the impressions. Hey, great. Look it's real funny. Hey, you understand i got to do my job here, Drew. Uh, yeah. That's called selling. Yeah, Laurel. Doodle faster. Hello? You're 16. Yeah. All right. Drew says we got to hurry, so get to your... Um, I find myself having more of an orgasm while I'm pregnant than before I got pregnant. That's normal. Is that normal? Yeah. And it'll get even more so as you hit that third trimester, sometimes. And I also got another question. Is it, like, strange for me to be 16 and, like, have a lot of partners? <laughs> yes. <laughs> not strange. Uh, not for this show. Yeah, not for this show, but uh, it, it concerns us about what what's making you do that. And then, uh, pregnant at 16 is not always the best sign either. Was your first partner someone in the family? Well, it was my sister's fiancé. How old was he? 19. How old were you? 12. Yeah, there you go. Whoa, anything before that? Huh? We, we wonder always why that a-hole uh, could seek you out as a, as a decent uh, object of his victimizing. In other words, what did anything happen? Did anybody hit you or anything like that before? No. That led this guy to believe that he could get away with this crap? Nothing. No. Well, here's the deal. Sometimes Wait, you're... About you're, to tell you. Oh, you are? Go ahead, sorry. It was... I don't know. There was problems in my family, but... Mm -hmm. Me and my mom always got in a fight, but... And let, and let, me, let me point something else out. You're smoking cigarettes? Yeah. You're three months pregnant, Laurel. Uh, three and a half, let's be fair. Okay, please. Please. It's so bad for the pregnancy. It is? Yes. Preterm, you, you, you may deliver too soon and have underweight babies. How about drinking? Also bad. Oh. I don't drink beer, but I smoke weed. Also okay. bad. Laurel, and you're smoking like a chimney. I mean, I, well, she's <laughs> nervous. She's on, a, she's on the show. Hey, Laurel. Huh? So nobody really, like, abused you, but they just kind of lowered your self-esteem. They didn't make you feel too good about yourself. Yeah. So you couldn't really say no to your... Um, Sister's well, I've always boyfriend. been afraid to say no, guys. <laughs> right. Well, if somebody, we think that somebody might have forced themselves on you in some way earlier. Mm -hmm. With physical or emotional abuse or something. Hey, um, Laurel, mm -hmm. can you get an abortion? I don't want to have an abortion. Not, not oh, you don't? Too no, late. I want to keep it. Too late. Three and a half is too late? Do you want, do you, yeah, I think I could do that. Are you concerned with damaging the child? Um, well, she wants to keep no, it. No, I've been trying to quit smoking. Oh, okay. Are you concerned with damaging the child? Yeah. Okay, don't smoke. I'm trying to quit. Laurel. <laughs> but I've been smoking since I was 10, so... Laurel, but it's how can hard. you take care of... I mean, you're, you're right now, your child's smoking. Laurel, you're talking to a doctor and smoking. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got, you, how can oh you God. possibly be capable of caring for a child if you can't even protect it from tobacco when it's inside you? 
I mean, think of all the other responsibilities that are going to come later. This is a very simple one. I've cut myself down on cigarettes, but okay. I'm cutting down slowly. Okay. <laughs> I can't cut the cold turkey, otherwise I'll be, like, crazy. <laughs> oh, Laurel. Oh, Laurel. Hey, uh, Laurel, hmm? you, do you know who the dad is? Uh-huh. The, the dad? Yeah. You, do you I'm know him? I'm engaged to him right now. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh, okay. How, how old is he? 40 now. He's 17. Okay. Hey. Well, good luck. Uh, I don't, you know, it's a tough, tough, you're, you're, you're carving out a Too tough. late for an abortion, you sure? Yeah, most states, I would think. Hmm. I was told you can have state. an abortion up to five months. Oh, good. What state are you in? Huh? What state are you in? What am I, what state? Yeah. California. I don't know, it goes up to five months in the state, but again, I don't know. Hey, uh, could you do that, Laurel? I don't want to have an abortion, I want to keep it. I, mean, I know, but we want you to. Five months in this state, it's incredible. Why, why do you want to keep it? It's going to be all screwed up because you're smoking too much weed and cigarettes anyway. <laughs> Why don't you get rid of this one? It's probably already screwed up a little bit from the cigarettes and stuff. And then you get a new one, you know, down the road. Are your mom and dad alcoholics? No. Addicts? No. Really? Hey, Laurel? Huh? Hey, what are you going to do? Are you going to drop out? Oh, you already dropped out of school? Oh, I go to independent studies. Oh, well, okay. But how are you going to take care of the kid? I have a job, and he has a job. Oh, okay. All right. What's your boyfriend do? He's, um, he works at Kmart. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Laurel? Hmm? Don't have any more kids for a while, though, right? Okay. Wear con him wear a condom. Please get on the pill. Okay. Take care of yourself, would you? Okay. Take care of the kid. Okay. That's it. You're an adult now. Okay? Okay. All, All right. right. Good luck. 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 I'm not going on a tie, right? No. Nope. Nope. That's all right. Stuff like this makes me sick. No, it doesn't make me sick. It doesn't make me sick. It uh, disturbs me, but it doesn't make me sick. And I, I feel I feel sorry for Laura. I feel sorry for oh. Laura. I feel sorry for her, her kids. I mean, we, 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 some, you know, I, sorry for, I feel sorry for us. <laughs> well, her parents ill-served her. Our society is ill-serving her. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, this, things are failing her on all fronts. Oh, now she's going to find a solution in this child. Hey, um, Drew? Yeah. Um... I can't, um, I can't have a monkey, like okay. where I live. All right. I can't own a monkey. I'm not zoned for that. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't have a llama. So I can't have a bobcat. I, I know what you're getting at. Now you're going to have one. You're just going to put one in your house just because. I can't own one. It, it's illegal for me to own a monkey. All right. You understand? Yeah. You, right. Your point? You know why? Dangerous. Uh, dangerous to the neighbors, dangerous to me, dangerous to the monkey. Yeah. Uh, I'm not capable. Right. I, I don't have enough land. I don't have a, a big enough tree. Right. Can't own a monkey. Right. Can't own a llama. Same thing. Tough for the neighbors, tough on me, tough on the llama. We have to protect the llamas. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. We can't do anything when uh, Laurel wants to, the uh, 60 year old wants to have a kid, chain smoking, smoking weed. Can't get involved. I can't have an effing kitchen over my uh, garage. Oh. Please. Now, our government is so busy chasing down uh, the uh, Todd McCormicks of the world uh, who are trying to smoke weed because of their cancer. They don't have time to get involved with these things. I want them involved with these things. I want the government in, in, in the uterus. Please. What? A lot of people say, uh, get the government out of the uterus. I want them in there. I want them to set up a bureau what? in the uterus. One out of three children born next year born without a dad. Oh, it's pathetic. One out of three. Yeah. Yeah. And wait do you get into the black community. Oh, it's, it's it's staggering. Please, we're killing ourselves, this country. We're going to get the government involved with something. Let's get them involved with this. We're going we're to commit genocide, Drew. Because we've got the government chasing down a guy smoking weed. Meanwhile, uh, we're, everyone's an illegitimate child. Hey, Kim. Yes. You're 26. Yes. You got any kids? Yes, I have two. Sell them to Japan. No. Okay. I love my children. All right. What's going on? Um, well, about a year ago, I met uh, a girl. And, you know, we became friends. Uh -oh. we, started, we started going out together to the bars, and my husband would stay home and watch the kids. And um, pretty soon she started coming over and staying the night at our house. And instead of going in bed with my husband, I would stay out in the living room with her and... Um, things kind of led to um, us sleeping together. Where were your kids? Oh, well, at the time, I only had one. 
So, um, but she was in bed in her room. She had her own room, so I was in the living room, and my husband was in bed in our room. Mm-hmm. So, but um, one night he kind of heard us and kind of peeked through the door and was watching, and I didn't know he knew anything was going on. So, um, I'm not sure if he wants to watch but I don't want him to because I'm jealous and I was wondering if it's wrong for me to want to be with somebody else but not letting him you know be with his wife and someone else I, I consider that cheating you said he, he wanted to watch no no he's been watching no he he kind of watched and I didn't know I didn't know he was awake yeah but he wanted to join in right I found that out later oh he told you that yes uh. People tell the stories and they leave out. Uh, it's yeah. like uh, our listeners. It's as if we'd ordered a uh, model of the uh, Missouri, like a battleship. We opened up and the hull was missing. Yeah. And we spent hours trying to put it together. We couldn't figure out why the thing wouldn't float or wouldn't work. There's whole big chunks left out. Kim, he wants to he wants to swing with you. Right. That's the only reason he's been playing stupid this whole time. I don't want him to. I, I figured I he'd just like let you. Jealous. Yeah, she's jealous. She's jealous. She's allowed to cheat, but he's not. I would feel like he would be cheating on me. Why is this? It's such a mess, Kim. What a mess. <laughs> I'm uh, selling a um, sitcom pilot to the uh, WB called Lesbian Mom. Oh. Nice. It's loosely based on uh, Kim's uh, situation. Ah. It's, 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 a, it's a comedy, but there's a, there's a little, little, little truth in there, a little edge. Um, Kim, mess, right? That's why, that's why you don't have extramarital experiences because it destabilizes your relationship it changes your relationship with your husband and there's no uh, no going back no it hasn't changed our relationship oh, well, the i don't think so the part about him whacking off in the hall yeah, Kim, <laughs> uh, yeah. well you're having <laughs> sex with another being that. maybe you've acted out something that hasn't changed your feelings about him although i it has to have i mean the quality of intimacy that you guys share together must have changed well we've mm-hmm. sat down and, and talked for hours right about. but you needed to do that because things were changing but he knew, well, he knew that before we got married, I had done it before. Yeah, but you got married. Well, it doesn't change my love for him any, and I, I don't think it'll change his love for me. So I want to write that one down if I get caught yeah. uh, hasn't. Oh, slow down. It hasn't changed my love for you. I'm going to change it to one iota. I think that'll drive the point home a little one more. One molecule. One molecule. Oh, better, better. Okay. Better. If I let him join in with that... Make I think I, I actually think you're stopping it here is a good idea. Okay. Because it's going to lead to more trouble. I I I. I mean, look look at what your fe- look at the feelings that are, you're coming up in. Hey, screwball! You got two kids. <laughs> Stop experimenting on the sofa while your uh, yeah, you kids are up there sh- uh, choking on their huggy blanket. If you wanted to experiment, you shouldn't have gotten married, and that's what you do when you when you. Re- it's time to have a family. It's time to create stability in the relationship and create an environment that's healthy for kids to grow up. Not okay. to not to go on pursuing your hedonistic uh, whims. <laughs> I mean, this whole BS that we grew, that we grew up in in the seventies is so much crap. I mean, for crying out loud, hey, just be happy. It's just BS. Your your job is to raise a family and to, and put your kids ahead of everything else. See, we gotta listen to the Jews. They know why. Yeah, yeah. Their their motto is uh, eat, be miserable, and put your kids through school. <laughs> They're not in all this hedonistic crap. I'm not going to be miserable or hang in a horrible no, they're right. relationship, but I'm saying, uh, you know, hey, I just, I, I need to, I, I, I just, I wanted to do this. I'm like, Christ. Hey, I'm, Kim. Yes. Well, why, why are you trying to screw up, why are you trying to screw up your relationship? Oh, I'm not trying to. Yes, you are. What's going on with you? I was looking for a good time. This is sabotage. Why well, are you trying to well, sabotage you things? I don't understand. The way I met my husband. Strip uh, bar. I, no, I had a boyfriend at the time. That's and, right. And he had a girlfriend at the time. Mm. And we were supposed to be like a one-night stand. Right. There. It, you it sabotage turned, that one. It, right. No, you sabotage it, every relationship you're in. It turned into a, a really good thing. Why do you sabotage your relationships? Oh, I don't. How many relationships have you been in? Uh, four. Four. How did they all end? Two of them. You, we now know of two that ended in sabotage. What happened to the other two? Two of them died. What happened with those? Uh, one was them. shot, and one was in a car accident. Okay. I didn't kill them. You didn't cut the brake lines? No. <laughs> no. Okay. How'd the one get shot? Just, uh, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, uh, when I was younger, uh, in a, a bad part of the neighborhood, doing the wrong things in life. 
Alright, so you, you look... He was like your pimp? No, 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 I wasn't okay. a prostitute. Okay. Uh, okay. drugs. Drugs? Drugs. Alright. Is that your dad did too? My dad, no. Mom? No. My parents are still married. They've been married for... Uh, nobody, did, nobody did drugs there? Drugs where? In the family? In the family. Well, all my siblings. Yeah. Alright, Kim, you, you're on... You, you, you sabotage. I am not. Believe me, you sabotage. No, why Why would you... Because do you're this? having sex with a woman in your living room while your kids are sleeping upstairs. This is not so and cool. you know your husband is walking around in, with a boner in his bathrobe. That's sabotage. Believe me, everybody, you get what you ask for. I mean, Drew, would you dream in a million, a billion years of doing that? Why? Because you'd be scared assless that your wife would find out, that your kids would come walking in, that the whole thing would blow up in your face. Yeah. Right. Well, it's not even. I mean, forget the fear factor. It's just, it's it's such a attack on the system, on on the family, and on the intimacy that you do have. It's just full scale assault on all that. I'm telling you, you're, you you people don't know why you're doing it or what you're doing it for, but you're sabotaging. Well, it's a very aggressive acting out. Katie. Yeah. You're thirty. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> um. Okay, I've been with my husband for 10 years. Mm -hmm. been married for six years. Sabotage her! <laughs> yeah, right. oh, okay. What's going on, And, um, well, about four years ago, we started having anal sex. And um, this was something that he introduced into... Imagine that. A male introducing that. Can you imagine I that? I know, I know. It's, it's usually a priest or a loved one who uh, brings it into the family. <laughs> so, well, uh, we, and we have two kids, and... After the first one, like, it started out that... If he'd introduced that anal sex six years earlier, they wouldn't have any kids, Tracy. I understand. That's why I like that. Um, after, I, we, I don't know, we, I did it, I didn't really like it at all at first. And, I mean, I did it because he wanted to, and I did it on very rare occasions, usually when I was pretty trashed. Um, but then, after the first kid, then it was, like, a little bit better. And now, after the second kid, she's four months old... I mean, we've probably done this as much in the last, you know, since she's been born than we did in the last four years. And you like this. And I'm loving it. Okay. So, um, so now, I don't know. First, I'm thinking, is this, like, normal? I mean, it, it must be a guy thing. I mean, I'm pretty open sexually. I mean, but... I don't know. I don't know what my question is there. Well, it's a guy uh, thing that they try to convert uh, girls into. He did it. Yeah, it worked for him. <laughs> it's, like, it's like some sort of exotic food that a guy brings from another country and he tries to get you to eat it. Some sort of raw catfish or something. Sea urchin. Sea urchin or some nonsense. And 90% uh, of the people try and spit it out. They want to go to Taco Bell. But 10% go, hey, I think you got something here. And then they get into it. Okay. That's what this is. Okay, okay. Um, but my other question is... is I mean, is this a safe activity? Mm, I mean, it's, you know, there are safer activities, but he should be using a condom, which is plenty of uh, lubricant, and uh, yeah. be careful. Well, we haven't been. Well, I mean, that's just to be I mean, safe, and, to and make it safe. Once he goes there, I don't let him go anywhere that's else. That's smart. You know? That's smart. And, I mean, uh, is that okay with that's that? Good. That's a good idea. Okay. And, uh, um, you know, and it can, it can tear things and hurt, you know, cause... Well, and that's, there's been, I know there's a history in my family. My, my sister had some problems with, um, I want to say, like, polyps on her colon or something, and... I mean, I'm just too embarrassed to ask her if... Well, colon polyps is a whole different thing, so don't worry about that. Is, that so that's something... A, well, the, I mean, she was telling me the other day, she's like, you know, you really should get checked for this or whatever. Yes, you should be checked for that. I totally agree, because that the colon polyps will become colon cancer. Right. And people that have polyps in the family are certainly predisposed to cancer. And I, well, now, are there symptoms for none, that? None. I mean, zero. Well, zero. She had, I mean, she had some kind of problem. Well, she might have bleeding or anemia. That's what you have bigger polyps do that, but the vast majority... That's why we do sigmoidoscopies and colonoscopies to screen for these things because you you have no symptoms that they're there and you can take them out before they ever develop into cancers. So I should get checked for that anyway. You know, you're actually a little young, but I'd say by 35 I would do it. Okay. Unless unless it's a real true polyposis, which is something a little different than just colon polyps. Okay. And then, well, recently, um, I don't know, this was about a week ago, um, we were having sex and there was some stimulation in that area, and but it, I just didn't want him to go there that night. Um, but then after that, I was, like, really constipated. And I, I don't know if it was just, like, the stimulation made me think that I had to, like, go. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't have an answer to what you're describing. That just could have been the hoagie. But where else can she go to ask these kinds of questions? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not a butt guy. You know? Okay. Uh, I'm uh, boobs and BJs. <laughs> that's what I want on my tombstone. So is he. <laughs> so is he? Yeah. yeah that's what happens when you're married for 10 years. You, yeah, you graduate. That's true. Move down to the... It's like, um, you know how they say that uh, marijuana is a stepping stone drug? Yeah. Jugs are a stepping stone. <laughs> and then you eventually you end up with the harder stuff. You get a hankering for the harder core stuff. Oh, That's so, the anus. So where am I going? I <laughs> uh, see. Yeah. So hus your husband's moving it along. It's hard to move down from there. Huh? Yeah. He's going to be putting uh, not only his penis, but um, he's going to have like a lamp in there, too. <laughs> okay. Cool. Oh, man. Oh, that's got... Are you a big woman? Um, yeah, I am. All right, so you can handle it. Yeah, okay. Big woman has bigger bowels uh, movements than uh, a smaller woman. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Oh, sure. Why not? Well, an elephant has a big... It takes a bigger flop than a, than a mule, right? Oh, well, I'm not calling her I'm an elephant, home. but I'm I saying the bigger I'm the home. bigger you are, the bigger the flop. The bigger the flop, uh, the more uh, dilation with the sphincter. Uh, yeah, I'm going home. <laughs> I really am. I'm going home. <laughs> Just follow the light. You are home. <laughs> All right, Katie. Good luck. Does he take it slow? Huh? Does he take it slow? Oh, he's wonderful. Okay. Right, things are fine. You know, you know he's getting her loaded every night just trying to get to the rear end. How about your favorite peppermint schnapps, honey? Oh, I say, yeah, have yourself a little thing. Honey, I haven't even, um, I haven't even, haven't even eaten dinner yet. Oh, come on. Have a capful. It's funny. But you know what? I, I really, I don't really believe guys enjoy anal sex. I think it's more of a sexual looting. <laughs> I think that's what they like. Guys like the plunder. They like they like the pillage. <laughs> it's not a looting. It's a it's a booting, or booty, as uh, producer Ann said. We do. We have that. You know, we like to we we like to uh, rape and pillage. It's a pillaging. I, am I right, Drew? Uh, yeah. It's just, it's just. Don't you think that a lot of guys' um, sexual preoccupation surrounds a sort of um, that, that sort of aggression, aggression yeah. and it's like a looting and yeah. a pillaging. It's an aggressive thing. What would her dad? hate to see most. All right. All right. Just Drew, Drew has kids, so he hates that. All right, that's all right. They'll have a cure for uh, anal sex by the time uh, your kids get older. And we'll be back. I feel so... E191. Dr. Drew, Adam Pearl. Daryl Hammond from Saturday Night Live will be in here. The guy does all the voices uh, tomorrow night. And that'll be good because uh, he'll do those voices. All right. Ready to uh, carry on here, Drew? Yeah. Justin. Yeah. What's going on? Nothing. Um, I'm not getting in a relationship with this girl that I've been seeing for a few months. And she just got out of like, a marriage about five months ago. She was married for eight years. Eight years? Yeah. How old is she? 26. Mm hmm. Mm. Now she's jumping in with an 18 year old. Yeah. yeah. Haven't I told you about that syndrome, Dora? Which one? Now she's like saying she's like confused and stuff like that. Well, of course she is. One where the woman gets divorced and uh, bangs the first uh, young Thai guy she can find. You've not mentioned that particular syndrome to me, no. Oh, but, uh, what are you talking about, Drew? I've I've said it a whole bunch of times. Women right, have been right. married for a little while and get divorced. They hop right on a young guy. All right. Well, that's what she's doing here. So what's up, Justin? What's your question? Nothing. It's just like right when she got out, you know, she was like like wanted to be with me, you know, and then like. Last about a month or so, she's just saying she's been, like, confused. Well, she's looking for a hostage. She's looking for somebody to rescue her from her misery right now. You had a lot of sex with her at the beginning? Yeah. She found a hostage, and then now she's... Now she's now getting she's, a little weird. Now she's starting to examine her feelings a little bit and look at what she's really doing, and, uh... Meanwhile, Justin's all horny and 18, and yeah. this is his first uh, serious sex, and, mm -hmm. and he's kind of screwed up over it. Right, well, Justin? Yeah, well, it's like, uh... Um, yeah. Like... They were, like, kind of, like, on bad terms, you know, at first. And then, like, to me, it seems like since he called one night, like, they talked, like, a half an hour. Oh. Uh, Justin, look. Uh, uh, oh, I hate to be 18 again. Yeah, this is not a relationship that's going to last. That's what we're going to tell you. Uh -huh. Just realize that. Does she have kids? Yeah, she has two. Oh, All right. No. Put a fork in it. The Justin. The sooner you can get yourself away, the better off Listen to me. Be. You know I'm a genius, right? Yeah. I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> oh, please. I'm right about everything. Well, it's just, it seems funny, you know, because, like... Justin, listen to me. You're 18. She's 26. She's got two kids. She's got all lot history with this guy. He had some great sex. I know what it's like. You're getting locked in. You're, you're drawn into her. You're tangled up in her web. She doesn't mean you any harm, but uh, on the other hand, she's not looking out for you either. 
believe me, this thing ain't going to go the course. I know you, you, you can't stand to think of the thought of her with someone else or you with someone else, unless that someone else was better looking. <laughs> That was always a provision I made when I was uh, 18. Made that but the reality is, Justin, this is going to be one of those stories you laugh about with your buddies over a couple of beers uh, a few years down the road. It's going to be a little painful at first, but you need yourself a younger woman who uh, is... not uh, just out of a divorce. That's right. Vicki. Hi. You're 18. Yeah. What's going on? Um, I have a question. Um, well, about the last four years I've experienced with men and women... And um, I've come to a point in my life where I, neither sex really attracts. I'm not attracted to either sex. Yeah. In a way, isn't that... <laughs> it's kind of nice. Isn't that kind of what that acting out is? Yeah, I guess. Why? It's the flip side of the same thing, isn't it? It's kind of... Well, I can't decide what I am. I'll, I'll take all of both. <laughs> and then, eh, I don't like either. Right. Same. Yeah, I just... I don't know if this is normal. I don't know if I'm going to get out well, of Well, what's it. going on with you that you can't have relationships with people? Well, I do. I mean, I have the relationships, like friendships and everything, but when it comes to sexual stuff, I mean... Why? I don't know. What's your history there that's leading to this? Um, I, well, <laughs> when I was a lot younger, I remember being in a room with my uncle, and I blacked out for a while, and I just remember sitting in the room and not knowing what happened, like, later on. Yeah. So I don't know if anything... I don't know if I was sexually abused by him or not. Hmm. Well, how old were you? Um, I would think I was about seven or eight. Do you think anything else happened other than that episode? No, I know nothing else happened. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yeah. How are they? Huh? How are they? Uh, they're fine. You weren't raped when you were 12 or anything like that? No. Never raped? No. Mm, brothers and sisters don't complain about uh, the uncle? Mm-mm. Mm, yeah. But I, I also do... I don't, I don't know. I like, I mean, when I'm with a guy, I like to give him oral pleasure, but I don't like anything else than that. And I like to give women oral pleasure, too. But other than that, they just, uh, they're just friends to me. I don't feel like I can be anything more with them. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, you're all screwed up, but uh, I think you'll be all right. Well, hey, you're 18, you know. I, I, I don't know. It's hard to tell if something happened to you, or is just your family crappy? No, my family's... Really and, and to go through a period when you don't want to have intimate relationships would not be all that unusual, not even that unhealthy, <laughs> it might be fine. No. I'm not quite sure. I, we'd need a lot more time to sort out exactly what's troubling you, I think. Yeah, something there's, some, there's something, something, something going on. First off, she's 18, she sounds like she's 48. Yeah. That's one thing. She's one of these people that reads a lot. Vicky? Yeah? You read a lot? No, my I just have a cold right now. My voice is really screwed up. Okay. You don't read too much? Oh, I read, um, yeah, I read. Okay, stop reading so much. <laughs> Start watching TV, would you? I disagree. Okay. Or watch more TV and lighten up. Okay. You're one of these people, you dress in a lot of black? No. You know, no, you're happy? Like I'm not saying she's a heroin addict. No. She's one of these morose people, though. You do too much thinking for an 18-year-old. <laughs> stop thinking so much. You watch that Duke's a Hazard. Start having sex. Okay. All right. Oh. It's all tuck. That's why I'd be the world's greatest therapist. I would actually have the Dukes of Hazard playing in my therapist's office. You know, if I know those bar mount type TVs. Wouldn't that be great? Dukes of Hazard on this wall, Love Boat on the other wall. When you're about two years further into your therapy from now, you're going to just be embarrassed as hell. Uh, listen, the crap you spew was out a wise now. ass. I got more therapy than you got. All right, Michelle. Hi. What's going on? What? What's happening there? Um, on. Um Saturday, my mom... And, and by the way, that's one of the books I want to get you, something that really teach you something. First off, Drew, I know more than you do, and all you've been doing is going to school. Michelle, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, on Saturday, my mom decided that she didn't want to live anymore, and she took a bunch of her prescription pills. she ever tried anything like this before? She hasn't talked about it or tried it since I was a little girl. So she, she she had tried it again previously then, right? I don't really remember. I just remember like... Michelle, stay with me. She has a history of having tried to hurt herself in the past. Yeah. Okay. Is she alive now? Yeah, she okay. was in the intensive care unit. Okay. Then... Does she have a long history of depression? Um, in other words, is she chronically depressed? She hasn't been like this in a long time. Okay. Like Does something trigger this? My stepdad and her have been, I guess... 
discussing getting separated. Okay. And my brother and I just found out okay. on Mother's Day. Does she drink a lot or do drugs or anything like that? No. Okay. <laughs> well, is she, like that. Okay. Is she, is, real, she, is she real dramatic? No, she she likes to... She doesn't really talk. Has she, she been on medication recently before this episode? She's been on antidepressants since I was born. Okay. So it's a chronic, chronic depressive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's just... It's really hard for me because I have an 11-year-old brother. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know anything that's happened. Mm -hmm. I thought she was going to say son. I swear to God, I was about to kill myself. And, oh, boy. Yeah? And I don't necessarily, like, my stepdad and I don't get along. We don't get along at all. Like, we got in a fight tonight, and I don't necessarily want to stay here, but I know I need to be here for my brother. Uh -huh. And I know I need to be here for my mom uh -huh. to help, like... Everything to make it seem well, like everything's normal. Oh, Michelle, wait a minute now. I, 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 I'm all in favor of you helping your brother out, but your mom's an adult. You're not her parent. You're not I responsible. I'm like helping her because she's not here right now. Right. She's, she's in like a, a psychiatric care facility. Where do you live normally, Michelle? I live with my parents. I live here. But like, I'm just so overwhelmed like with everything that's happening. I just want to like. You like to get out. I just I don't know what to. Well, do. you're 22. It would not be a bad idea to get out, but but. You know, uh, to the instinct to stay there to help the 11-year-old, I think, is a, is a good one, too. Uh, on the other hand, to try to make things seem normal is, may not be a, a, the, the s healthiest idea because things are not normal. She's no, been struggling not. with a lot of stuff here. And you know, recognize that, de that a suicidality is just a symptom of depression. Yeah. Okay? And 17% of people that have major depression kill themselves. It's yeah. part of the disease. You know, it doesn't mean anything about her or her anything about you or her desire to hurt you or anybody else uh, this is just what the brain requires of somebody that gets depressed about. how's your life doing other than um, this part everything's great I just graduated college and trying to like get my life together but keep working on that keep working on that it's just it's just really hard right now with everything that's happening it's just like I know that I have nothing to do with what's going on with her, uh -huh. and it's just she's trying to cry out for help, and she's trying to like make everyone wake up and see that she really does need something. And that may not have anything to do with why she could try to kill herself. Well, I'm with uh, you though, Michelle. Most people try to kill themselves do it in sort of a quasi psychotic state. They just they sort of they get an impulse, and it's it's sort of uh, it's an irrational thought they have as a way yeah, of trying to. Yeah, but wouldn't they? Wouldn't most people who, who did that want to do a better job killing themselves? Most, most adol people. adolescents think the way Michelle is, thinks she would be thinking, that they cry out for I mean, help, when they want to hurt it. When, when you're, you're in your adult, 40s? Yeah, when you're 40, well, that is just a biological expression of how severe the depression is. I know she is. was trying to cry out for help because that morning she was on the phone talking to someone, and later I found out that it was like a suicide helpline. So I know she was trying to call out for help. Yeah, but the reason for the yeah. suicidality had nothing to do with that. It's just that her depression was uh, right. at that point. All right, look out for yourself. Look out for your brother. Yeah. Other than that, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, it's tough. Uh, Mom, I don't know, with medication and time and therapy yeah. and yes. all that kind oh, of no, stuff. No, listen, it's very treatable, and she could be okay. Yeah. She could be fine. Things, things can be okay. It's just like any other chronic illness which has acute exacerbations. It, it's painful. But there's what is up with this life and the people and their psyches? and um, You know what I mean? Why do we have to be tortured this way? Why do we get tortured like this? Life is tough. Life has never been easy for human beings. I swear ever. to God, I think sewer rats are, 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 are having a better time than uh, most of the people we talk to. You know what I mean? Why do we need all this? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Um <laughs> No, but I mean, I don't know, Plato. listen, there's there's <laughs> certain, I, I swear to God, I can't figure out the human mind. I understand uh, how the human body works. I understand, you know, when you put your hand over an open flame, it's very painful, so you move your hand so you don't burn your skin. I mean, there's a bunch of crap like that that seems to work just fine. And, and, the, and the body is amazing when it comes to that junk. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, you know, when you get a splinter, it, it actually will push it out of right, you and right. all that kind of stuff. Drew, right. you saw this uh, cut I got on my hand. Yeah. I swear to God, thing looked like it needed stitches three days ago, beautiful. right? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Go touch it. Looks right, good. I lick it. Yeah. It looks good, though, right? Yeah. It was all swollen, looked yeah. like could have used a stitch. Right, no, look at that. Good, no. Beautiful. Great, yeah. It's beautiful. Your What's brain? going on with the brain, though? Still pissed at my parents. The hand's fine. I'm gonna kill my parents. <laughs> what is that? Why do I gotta go through that? Doesn't make any sense.
It is so. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I like the line in the song where he says, uh, every, wait a minute, <laughs> how's that go? No, not every boy and every girl, every, every beginning, oh, wait a minute, every new beginning is the end of another, be yes, comes from some other uh, beginning hey, end. Are you I the like same Adam who lived next to Max Truex? Mm-hmm. You are? That was my neighbor. Frank Warren. Hope so. Yeah, Frank lived down the street. Oh, for crying out loud. I remember him. We played some uh, good softball with Frank. Huh. Did you want me to talk about it on, uh, address that on the air? Oh, I don't know. I just picked it up. All right, if anyone knows Frank Warren, uh, tell him that's the uh, same Adam who lived up the street. And uh, what was uh, affectionately known uh, to the neighborhood folks is the barn. Grew up in the barn. Becky. Hi. Hey, you're 25. No, I'm tw I'll be 21 in, on Wednesday. I have no idea why I said 25. Right, Becky, Go what's ahead. going on? <laughs> Hi, I've been married um, for almost four years. Mm. Wait, no, three. <laughs> I have a 16-month-old son. Oh, got married husband. before the baby. What a uh, novel no, 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 no. We got married on October 13th, and we moved, and I got pregnant the next year. In yeah, you have me married okay. before the baby. It's it's an, a refreshing huh? change. What? Go ahead. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. Hey, hey Becky, Becky, pregnant. hold on a second. Becky? Becky? Yeah? I'm going to put you on hold and punish you for just a second, okay? <laughs> okay. Because Drew said, oh, you got married before the baby. Mm. And your re yes. your response was, no, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, well, um, for being ultra defensive, I'm going to let you think about it for a minute. Stopping the show. <laughs> Please, everybody, stop saying no to Drew all the time. Stop it. Every goddamn word that comes out of Drew's mouth, someone yells no. I got, uh, you know, my kid's a year old. I've been married for uh, 12 years. <laughs> 12 years. Oh, you got married before the kid? No. <laughs> yes, you idiot. Please. God, why does everyone do that all the know, time? Why, and why doesn't it bother me? Why am I even aware? Marky, you're 17. Because well, then we stop and argue about it. Now I'm confused. What? Well, yeah, what? Marky, what's going on? Oh, hi. I had a question. Um, when Okay, since I was, like, in fourth grade, I've had these really weird feelings, and I remember it clearly when I got out of the shower, I just, um, I didn't, like, want to see myself. Like, it wasn't really... Hmm. You remember the moment? Yes. I, I was getting out of the shower, and I just, like, saw myself there naked, and I didn't want that. Huh. In the fourth grade? In fourth grade. Okay. Okay. What was going on in your life at that time? Oh, no. My parents, um, they have been, like, perfect parents. I mean, my dad worked. My mom was like a housewife and everything. And nothing. I don't... You're I, not aware of anything going on then? Um, what was that? You're not aware of anything going on in your life? Was, yeah, I would... You I, hadn't moved or anything like that? No, or? I've never... The only time I moved was when we moved... Um, we moved to a different town. And that was not in fourth grade? No, that was yeah. like four years ago. Okay. So, I mean, that was in any... Okay, so you walked out of the shower and you had this funny experience. Yeah, and it happened to me my whole fourth grade year and then fifth grade came along and it happened to me and then one time when I, I, I saw myself again I got really sick like I started throwing up uh -huh. and um, I always thought that I, somebody did something to me but I can't I can't I I can't really get like a well you thought someone did to you, something to you in the fourth grade or, or before, before that. that but it just hit you then yeah well, what, what do you think happened see I See, I don't understand because um, I don't understand why I was like that. I mean, I when I'm with guys, I mean, I'm still a virgin. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I get close to them, I get really sick. What makes you think something happened? What do you remember? Or what do you think happened? I, I think that I got, like, molested or something. Where? I, I see That's the thing. I, I get, I start getting pictures, but then... They don't come clear to me. What are the pictures of? Um, sometimes I see myself, because okay, those when I was younger, and yeah. I haven't had those feelings for What were the feelings? All right, listen, I'm going to come over there and strangle you, Marky, if you don't tell us what the scenario is, <laughs> why you think you were molested. Not if, not when, just why. What, what was the situation? What are the memories? Uh, really, um, see, we, I had a godfather, 
at the time, and we used to stay there all the time. Mm-hmm. And he was a really heavy drinker. Uh, okay. okay. Godfather uh, plus exactly. booze equals molestation. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm going to have that poster on my, yeah. ki- uh, on my kid's door. Yeah, it could be, so who knows. Uh, so, Marky, why don't you get some help? Why don't you get, you know, rather than going through all these horrible, unpleasant feelings, why don't you... Get some therapy. Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't happen, but Boy, it's, it's having, affecting you like it did, so you yeah. might as well look into you're it. You're having lots of symptoms is the issue here. Yeah, I wanna... the thing is, um, ever since, like, okay, there's sometimes I just tell myself, don't think about it, don't think about it. Then recently, like maybe two weeks ago, no, yeah. I, I got really sick again. And okay, Marky, listen to us. Get some help. Stop just repeating what we're saying, yeah, get and them, you got to do something about some it. Help. Oh, I, mean, I had another question. No, yeah, what's the other no, question? the first one took too long. Listen, you don't have time to spare. This is the biggest issue in your life. Understand? This is a big issue. you got to look into it, Marky. Okay, I just had a medical question for Drew. Yeah, very quick. Um, I have a scoliosis right mm-hmm. now. And um, if I, well, I, uh, um, they saw, like, they noticed it when I was in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. And so right now, it's like, if I sit up for a while, mm-hmm. it starts hurting really bad. So does that mean I have to go into the... Um, do I have to go to, like, get a checkup? Because they said it wasn't going to bother me until I was like... I no. think it's worthwhile certainly getting a check since you haven't had it looked at in four or five years and you're having back pain. But sitting for a long time and having back pain sounds normal to me, especially yeah. at your age. So. Yeah, especially if you're in one of these with one chairs. Yeah. You get uh, par- paralyzed. Hey, you know what I just thought of? Yeah. You know what you got to do with your kids? In the room? Yeah. In the bathroom? Yeah. You install the funhouse mirror. Mm. So each time they see themselves in the nude... They have some sort of bizarre, misshapen, uh, misformed uh, image of themselves. So when they really see the real thing, they'll be so delighted with it? No. Oh. So they just have a horrible self-esteem, <laughs> and uh, the boys think their scrotum goes down to their knee and that their uh, head is shaped like a Frisbee. And then what would this do for me? They have such poor self-esteem and self-image they're that they're to scared to be seen uh, and nude or yeah. to be with someone else. Uh, they think that's good? That ball. All right, was this, uh... This is Becky. Who's the one? All right, let's try this again. Uh, hi. Hey, Becky, you're 21. Yeah. Okay, what's going on? I had my son 16 months ago, and while I was pregnant, I didn't want to do anything but have sex. Mm-hmm. And now, ever since I've had him, I love my husband dearly, and but mm-hmm. they're just... Sex it just really doesn't appeal to me. You've been married how long? I've been married... Almost three years. Ooh, got October married before be they had a baby. How refreshing. Huh? We got married before you had a baby. How refreshing. Yes. <laughs> Drew was nice to there. We on a request of our parents. <laughs> yeah. My, my husband got a job, and we were going to go together and move to Kansas, and they wanted us to get married before we went. So mm-hmm. we did. Yeah. And yeah, I love nice. him to death. Okay. That's, that's good. good. It's very common for women after they give birth to have a drop in their sex drive. It was 14 months ago? 16. A little, little bit long. It's certain that first year there can be a lot of that sort of symptomatology. And um, I think one of the first things the gynecologists typically do is put someone on the birth control pill. See if that yes. makes it better. I, well, first I was on the shot, and I... I, mm, I don't think... I'm not sure the shot is the right answer. Cause I sometimes, know, we, we learned that. I yeah. tried for like a month. Well, not only that, sometimes that will drop sex drive, too. Uh, I, I would just go on the plain old... All, and then I the, went on the pill. The triphasic pill is the one that's most likely to increase your libido. But still, I mean... And All right, that's we are both, I admit it to you, we are both alcoholics. Uh, we do drink. I like sex a lot better when we are both sober. I like sex better sober. You know, um, I just... Are you saying your alcoholism is taking off a little bit now? I don't know. I, I mean... Well, she's well, drunk now. now. now <laughs> it's taking like, off a little bit. I'm mean, certainly that can impact on your sexuality. No doubt about it. If, you're, if your alcoholism is progressing, uh, don't expect things to work <sighs> normally. Hey, uh, Hey, Becky. Yeah. What do you have, a boy or a, a girl? A boy. I was just trying to figure out if he's going to be a murderer or a prostitute. Okay, so it's a boy, so he's going to be a murderer. I prefer um, alcoholic parents to have girls because they just become sluts. and But they're not a danger to society. Uh, the boys end up killing people. That's rough. I'm sorry you had to have well, a boy. we're not, I mean, we're not, I mean, since he's been working great, Ray Ray, we're not, we don't drink that much. I mean, it's... All right, but you're drunk lot, now. L- listen, Becky, here's here's the deal. Please, for the uh, sake of um, society. Yeah. Uh, your kid's 16 months. Yeah. Stop drinking, could you? Please, you know what it does to them to have alcoholic parents? 
Yeah, That's true. all we it's, talked it's, to all night long. Very traumatizing to a child. They got a they got a they got a one percent chance of uh, forming a successful rock band, and <laughs> and they got a ninety nine percent chance of uh, being an axe murder. Please, Becky, I don't want to bum your hive. And listen, go to, go to AA. Check please for the kids. Yeah, please, would you please? Yeah, it's okay. negligent. For your sex life too. How about that? For your sex life too. Yeah, you can't yeah. drive a car drunk. You sure as hell can raise kids. Though. <laughs> I love that. People don't realize how traumatizing and abandoning it is for a child to be around an intoxicated parent. It's frightening to them. Yeah, it's not even they're not even home. It really gets them. So uh, don't think the child doesn't know it. They know it. Well, they feel it, whatever it is. They may not know what the hell it is, right. but believe me, they feel it. Yeah. Hey, uh, we Marky. Marky right we did? Yeah. Uh, whatever she's doing. Oh, okay. Like... Why isn't she gone by now? <laughs> Mark, would you get out of here? I, was, I went to Mark because she'd uh, been on hold for a million years. Sarita. Sarita. Yeah. You're 14. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Can yeah, we... I'm going to read you your question. When she and her boyfriend are alone, he's fine. When he's with friends, ignores her. How old is he? He's 16. That's what 16-year-old guys do. Yep. That's the problem with being a 14, 15, or 16-year-old girl, is you have to date 16-year-old guys. You understand? Mm -hmm. Tell them how you feel. And then be uh, be uh, tough love. Listen, you ladies, you train a guy just like uh, you train a dog. You ask him once nice, second time you go with the newspaper, you tug on the leash. Believe me, they get the message. You're in the, you're in the driver's seat, women. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially the 16-year-old guy, especially if there's any kind of hanky-panky going on. Uh. You tell them how you feel once. I don't like uh, being uh, treated disrespectfully in front of your friends. Stop or I will stop this relationship. And give them a chance. And if they don't stop, stop, then stop. Make the consequences. Believe me, they come back crying. And it's not their tail that's tucked between their legs either. Okay, Drew. I can see you're done. I'm done. Uh, oh, yeah. How about it? Boys, Harvey Danger. All right. Daryl Hammond will be in here from Saturday Night Live tomorrow night. Right. And uh, until next time, this is Ace Rock Cola for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed herein are not necessarily those of the staff or management or producers or directors or the advertising or anything. They might be Bob's. I'm Bob, and they're mine. The producer of Loveline is Ann Wilkins. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment. Grr. Arg. We now return you to your highly tested, regularly scheduled programming. Bye.